This video captures a complete print, cut and installation project filmed in real time. The stopwatch is going to be visible throughout with no cuts in an attempt to give you a realistic example of day-to-day -day operation. Of course, our showroom is far from a production environment, but if anything, these printers are at their most reliable when they're being used. The printer being used is the Roland LG 640 UV printer cutter. It had been sitting in standby since the previous week, following a set of sample prints I ran for a customer. Before starting, I gave the white ink pouches a shake. Even though this job isn't going to involve printing white, it's still good practice. The white inks typically contain denser pigments, which can settle when they're left undisturbed. Another good practice is running a test print to check all the nozzles are firing as they should, especially when the printer has been sat idle. There were a couple of missing nozzles in the black, so I ran a standard clean before printing. Following this, I ran a cut test to check the blade was set up to get through the vinyl and stop at the backing liner. This was a similar vinyl to the one I'd used in the previous week, but the cutting force had been up to 80 grams in order to cut through a dense layer of ink for borderless stickers. For this job, I reduced it down to 60 grams, which gave a clean and accurate cut. Moving on to the Ripsoft way, you'll notice there are quite a few settings available, but in this case, I only need to make a few small adjustments. The cut path and the gloss varnish layer were already embedded in the artwork during the design stage in Adobe Illustrator. I started by importing the two door files, which I'd kept separate on purpose so I could apply a sheet cut between the prints. I double clicked on the first file, let the rip software detect the media width based on the loaded roll, and then went to the quality tab to choose the resolution and special colour settings. I also added a perforated sheet cut to easily tear the graphic off when it was done. I repeated the same steps for the second file and sent both to rip and print. I started out by making a template when the panels would be going using craft paper. I thought this was quite clever, but after the first door I realised my measurements were off and I ended up sideboarding most of it. If anyone out there has any tips or tricks on how else this could have been done without marking out the entire door, I'd be interested to know. Just to call it out, this amount of vinyl waste you can see at the start is definitely not necessary. It's common to leave a couple of inches to avoid head strikes and a couple more of your console cutting, but I went a little bit overboard here. I chose UV for this particular project because the prints come off the machine fully cured. That means no drying time, no delays, and no issues with ink transfer or surface tackiness. It's ideal for tight schedules of same day application. This entire workflow wouldn't be possible on a solvent printer. With solvent, you'd normally need to leave prints to out gas 24 hours before cutting or applying them. Try rushing that and you're asking for curled edges and shrinking. Latex could have been used, but it would have required separate machines for printing and then cutting. The finish would have also been less reflective compared to the gloss varnish I used. I chose to include this to achieve an extra reflective surface which would look more like glass panels in a door frame. An added bonus was that it also thickened the vinyl slightly, making it easier to handle during application. Once the cut was complete, the excess vinyl was weeded away and the panels were applied immediately. The vinyl I use is Metamark MD5A with air release adhesive. Instead of a full flood of glue, the adhesive layer on air release vinyl is applied in a pattern, allowing trapped air to escape. It's great for imperfect application, especially if, like me, you're not a pro finisher. If you're new to vinyl application, definitely consider using air release materials. It can save you a lot of headaches and reduce the risk of bubbles, creases, and misalignment during dry application. 
The entire print and cut run was completed exactly 36 minutes into the process. Application continued from there and the entire project, including the setup, printing, cutting and install, was finished in under 52 minutes. As mentioned before, a flood of gloss varnish was used across all panels to achieve a high shine, glass-like finish. This added surface quality and improved the handling, but it also increased production time and the ink usage. For time-sensitive or low-budget jobs, a colour-only print would have been completed much faster. This is the type of job that highlights the strength of UV printing. Fast, clean, efficient and self-contained. Solvent wouldn't have allowed this kind of turnaround. Latex could have managed the speed, but with more equipment and a less impactful finish. Before you jump into any printer purchase, ask yourself, what kind of turnaround do I need? What materials do I plan to work with? People often associate UV printers with rigid boards, but machines like the Roland LG640 designed for roll-fed, flexible materials. Would I use it for vehicle wrapping? No, but for general signage and even gentle contours and curves, UV is ideal. For more details on the process, materials or printer setup used here, feel free to get in touch. Always happy to share more insight.